Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about the Irish mathematician William Rowan Hamilton. Now he's most famously associated with a special type of number called quaternions, which are really an extension of the complex number system and with a function in physics known as the Hamiltonian. So let's discover more about the man Hamilton and the maths that he helped to pioneer. William Hamilton was born in Dublin in 1805, the fourth of nine children of Sarah Hutton from a well-known family of coach builders in Ireland and Archibald Hamilton, a solicitor. Before he was even three, he was sent to live with his uncle, a clergyman and academic who ran a school in Trim, County Meath. Hamilton showed his genius early on. He was a child prodigy, brilliant at maths and could speak a number of languages fluently. He came first in the entrance exam to Trinity College Dublin and started his studies there in 1823. He always came top in his university exams, whether they were in Greek or maths, but eventually he decided to focus his studies on mathematical physics. In 1827, Hamilton, just 22 years old, was appointed Andrews Professor of Astronomy at Trinity College, which carried with it the title of Royal Astronomer of Ireland. He held these positions until his death, and during all that time lived at Dunsink Observatory about five miles to the northwest of the centre of Dublin. But the antiquated instruments at Dunsink and outdated observing programme, which the Royal Astronomer was compelled to follow, made it impossible to do any real astronomy of note. In fact, Hamilton hired three of his sisters to help run the place while he got on with other things that interested him more. Among these interests was writing poetry, although it has to be said this was one thing that he wasn't very good at. The great poet William Wordsworth was a good enough friend to gently remind him that his real talent lay in maths and science. Hamilton did some early work on caustic curves. A caustic is the envelope formed by light rays that are reflected or refracted by a curved surface or object, and a caustic curve is a curve formed by the intersection of such an envelope with a plane. Hamilton's investigation of caustic curves led to him making important contributions to what's known as the principle of least action, which enables many physical problems to be expressed more elegantly. One of Hamilton's greatest insights involved the representation of complex numbers in three dimensions. In 2D, a complex number Z is a number that can be expressed in the form X plus YI, where X and Y are both real numbers and I is the square root of minus one, or what's known as the imaginary unit. Now, in two dimensions, a complex number can also be represented as a point in the complex plane, XY. Transformations, in other words, combinations of translations, rotations, enlargements, and so on, can be represented by a function that sends a complex number z to az plus b, where a and b are constants that are independent of z. Hamilton was interested in extending this link between complex numbers and plane geometry to three-dimensional space, but it turned out to be more of a struggle than he'd anticipated. It seemed natural to Hamilton that just as the elements of complex algebra in 2D are pairs of real numbers x, y, so in stepping up a dimension, we'd be dealing with triplets of the form x, y, z. For over 13 years, he struggled to find a way of making this algebra of triplets work. Then, one day, October 16th, 1843, he was walking with his wife Helen along the towpath of the Royal Canal in Dublin when he had a sudden flash of inspiration. He realized that what he needed wasn't triplets, but sets of four numbers, which he called quaternions. A quaternion is a 4D complex number of the form Q equals W plus XI plus YJ plus ZK, where I, J, and K are different square roots of minus one. As soon as the idea came to him, Hamilton jotted down in his pocketbook the basic formulae for multiplying quaternions. And these formulae are now displayed on a plaque, unveiled in 1958 on Broom Bridge, close to where Hamilton had his great insight. 
You can think of a quaternion as being made up of a scalar part, w, which is a real number, and a vector part, xi plus yj plus zk. And this vector part can be represented in size and direction by a line joining two points in 3D space. Quite a few mathematical terms that we use today, including scalar and vector, were coined by Hamilton when he was developing the theory of quaternions. Of his invention, Hamilton wrote, the quaternion was born as a curious offspring of a quaternion of parents, say of geometry, algebra, metaphysics, and poetry. I've never been able to give a clearer statement of their nature and their aim than I have done in two lines of a sonnet addressed to Sir John Herschel, and how the one of time, of space, the three might in the chain of symbols girdled be. Hamilton devoted much of his later life to the theory of quaternions, and he wrote lots of papers on them and two long books. The Scottish mathematical physicists Peter Guthrie Tate and James Clerk Maxwell applied the theory to problems in electromagnetism and heat propagation. In fact, Maxwell used quaternion notation for writing the equations of electromagnetism in his famous book called Treatise on Electricity and Magnetism, published in 1873. Today, quaternion algebra is still used because it allows more efficient algorithms than matrix algebra for computing the combined effect of successive rotations in 3D. So quaternions find their way into the code for computer games and spacecraft navigation. Hamilton was also responsible for a bit of a curiosity in recreational maths. He invented what he called the Icotian game and described it for the first time in 1857 at a meeting of the British Association in Dublin. The object of the game is to find a way around the edges of a dodecahedron, a 12-sided shape, so that every corner or vertex is visited once and only once. A path like this became known as a Hamilton circuit. Although the task of finding a circuit that passes just once through every vertex of a shape seems to have arisen first in connection with Leonard Euler's study of the Knight's Tour, a famous problem in chess. Two years before Hamilton introduced his game, Thomas Kirkman posed the problem explicitly in a paper that he submitted to the Royal Society. Given a graph of a polyhedron, does there exist a cycle passing through every vertex? The Icotian game stemmed from Hamilton's invention of a kind of algebra that he called Icotians, based on the symmetry properties of the icosahedron, a 20-sided shape. Hamilton connected the mathematics of his Icotians with the problem of travelling along the edges of a dodecahedron, hitting each vertex just once and coming back to the starting point. His friend and fellow Irishman, John Graves, suggested turning the problem into a commercial game and put Hamilton in contact with the London toy makers, John Jackson's sons. Jacks bought the rights to the game for £25 and marketed two versions of it under the name Around the World. One version for the parlour was played on a flat board, another consisted of an actual dodecahedron. In both cases, nails at each vertex stood for a major city of the world, and the player wrapped a piece of string around these nails as they went. In the event, the game was a complete sales flop, mainly because it was too easy even for children, but not for Hamilton himself, who always used the Icotian calculus to figure out his moves instead of just trying different paths like everyone else. I've already talked about quaternions. Another of Hamilton's great discoveries uh, has found its way into the theory of the subatomic world. Hamilton rewrote Newton's laws of motion in a powerful new form that involves something called the Hamiltonian. This is the sum of the kinetic energies of all the particles associated with the system plus the potential energy of the particles. The German mathematician Felix Klein saw that the Hamiltonian, together with the so-called Hamilton-Jacobi equation, which relates waves and particles, might be relevant to the new field of quantum mechanics. At Klein's suggestion, the Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger looked into the possibility and, sure enough, was able to incorporate Hamilton's work at the heart of his formulation of wave mechanics. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and that you'll join me again very soon to discover more maths.